and shareholders. And that confidence is only guaranteed for as long as the rare earth price holds and for as long as this land plant um, is a going concern. So, you know, there are ways we can actually make Linus a very weak company. It has been effective because it has hired fairly good PR, um, you know, team of people. They have internet, you know, oh, good, good internet good. sites, they have Facebook site, they even have stock recommended, re recommending sites, you know, where they talk up the company's share worth, they talk up the rare earth um, potential and, and so on and so forth. Um, so, you know, it is not hard to crush a company like that. With so many people support in Kuantan and in Malaysia, I mean, the campaign against Linus in Malaysia has been known in Australia, predominantly through SMSL going to Sydney. I mean, when the Australian people saw 12 people, a team of 12 people coming to Australia, stage a demo outside the Linus headquarters in Sydney, and then, you know, going to the parliament, meeting with the politician, meeting with with a different group, meeting with the students, going to Western Australia again for another, um, you know, trip, campaign trip, and they're wondering, what the hell is this movement? Malaysia is, after all, a third world country. How on earth can they afford such expensive uh, visit to Australia to protest? And, you know, the people must be feeling so strongly that, you know, they're willing to put in the investment for these two campaign trips that happen. So this is what touches the people in Australia. Um, you'd be surprised that many people in Australia have heard of Linus because of the strong movement in Malaysia and also because of the media generated from the two visits. I mean, many of us in Australia, we are veteran campaigners, you know, we campaign on forests and all sorts. It has been so hard for us to get, you know, big pictures on the, in, the, in the financial press. But when the SMSL people went to uh, Sydney or Canberra or WA, they managed to get really good coverage in the media. That is amazing. You know, that speaks a lot. Those are the media space we have been begging and hoping in Australia for the campaigns that we, we ourselves run. So this is a pretty phenomenal campaign. So don't, uh, un, you know, don't be too pessimistic. I can see a lot of hope. Kuantan happens to be my hometown, and I'm totally angry that this is happening in my hometown. I'm back in Malaysia on long service leave, and instead of going around the country enjoying what be a beautiful country this is, I'm sitting in front of my laptop every day, thinking liners, talking liners, you know, working on liners with my very wonderful friends in Kuantan. But at the same time, I'm really, really proud of all of us in Kuantan, you know, in Balok, um, who have put in so much energy to make this campaign the biggest environmental campaign in Malaysia so far. I'd like to say a few things about some of the um, possibilities in Australia. When SMSL went to Sydney and uh, Western Australia, or Perth, um, we've managed to you know, secure a number of meetings. Um, now, just yesterday, the opposition, the leader of the opposition in Western Australia, the Labour Party, um, wrote a letter to Aslan. Yeah, good on you, Mike. Um, saying that, you know, the Labour Party will oppose the export of rare earth um, into another country. I mean, that is a very significant achievement. As a result of the Labour Party representative meeting SML um, uh, campaign, campaigners back in September. So that's a very significant achievement. And then um, they met with the Sydney, the New South Wales Environment Defenders Office and also the uh, WA, the Western Australian Environment Defenders Office. These are legal based NGO and they have since done some groundwork and they have found several areas of the law in Australia where they can take liners to court. Um, under the Corporate Act, potentially there may be cases around insider trading because 
Nick, Nick Curtis particularly knew about some of the defects in the plant, um, knew about the delay in the production, and knew about the delay and the, the uncertainty around the issuing of the pre-operating license. And yet he hasn't actually um, reported to ASX, which he is required to do under the Corporate, corporate Act. Um, and then there's other disclosure issues which we are now doing some research on. Um, and there are a whole range of other corporate governance issues which this company is, uh, you know, being kind of uh, at the verge of um, being discovered and we are looking into that. Um, and the interesting thing is in the, at the project on the ground, there's been a lot of internal frictions, conflicts and problems. And because of that, we're getting a lot of information from people who had worked in the plant and from people who are not happy with what's going on. Um, also, Trade Practices Act. If you look at any Linus public information, they made a lot of false claims that it is, it, it is green, it is safe, and it has zero harm. I mean, how blatant is that claim? You know, to say that this project has zero harm. Uh, I mean, Professor Tan has pointed out the <laughs> phenomenal amount of waste that this company is going to produce. And that zero harm? We should submit this for Guinness Book of Records. Absolutely. So, also another loopholes that we are uncovering about the Linus um, project in WA is the Transport Act. Linus is actually exploiting a very tiny loophole in the Transport Act, um, which kind of exempted it to classify its um, rare earth concentrate to be a hazardous uh, substance or a radioactive substance. Now, that loophole is being looked at by the uh, lawyer in WA. So anyway, I, I mean, time's running out. I really want a, a very interactive um, engagement tonight and uh, happy to answer any other question. But, you know, let me assure you that this is not a hopeless situation. So there are a lot of ways. Let us, let us all work together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rita. Now, what we are concerned is, what do the people think? And that's the purpose of this gathering tonight. We want to hear from the people. And uh, you are supposed to view as many questions as, as you like. And a point to note is the Environmental and Climate Change Committee of Bar Council and the Kuala Lumpur Legal Aid Center has something, they have something in common that is social responsibilities reaching to the grassroots. And uh, in these respects, we encourage people to come up with very probing questions, difficult questions and take on the speakers tonight. They come from different perspectives, different levels, the experts, the, uh, the lawyers, and uh, people from the grassroots movement, the leaders and all that. So, questions. 